I bought a piece of land at the beginning of this year. I spent about 1.4, 1.5 million dollars. And my mother called me and said, what did you do? You know, well, are you crazy? You spent so much money for what? What is this? There's a land grab taking place online. People and companies are racing to plant their flags in the metaverse. Nike, Gucci, Burberry, Samsung, Walmart, large companies around the world are spending millions. Being able to blend the world around you with the virtual world and bring all the creative and expressive power of digital to your physical surroundings, this is a big step forward. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg didn't invent the idea of the metaverse, but since he renamed and refocused his company, he's taken the term mainstream. The metaverse. The metaverse. Meta's investing billions on Zuckerberg's vision for a single universal virtual world that people will live, work and play in through virtual and augmented reality. We're years away from his vision being realised, if ever, but already brands around the world are spending tens of millions of dollars investing in other metaverse style platforms. And in most of them, you don't need this. Last month, Walmart launched this zone in the hugely popular game Roblox, which, alongside Fortnite and Minecraft, is seen as the most mainstream of the fledgling metaverse platforms. Nike has also thrown itself into the metaverse, building Nike Land in Roblox. These experiences are estimated to cost millions to create, and in some cases the investment is going even further, with digital land being bought outright. German fashion designer Philipp Plein is one of those betting big on metaverse real estate. This year, when we started to open our first store in London, we made it become a crypto pop-up store, okay? Um, and, and that was very interesting because we started also to accept crypto payments in the store, okay? So first we started online last year in August, and then we were also here again, one of the first accepting crypto payments inside the store in the luxury textile industry. And this is when I started also to, to learn about the metaverse. I made a bold step beginning of this year and, and spent 1.4, 1.5 million dollars for a piece of land because I was thinking, okay, I'm starting all over again, right? I have a brand since 24 years, but if you would build a brand today and you look into the future, how would you do it? As an early adopter of crypto products, Philip sells all his clothing in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Pline Plaza, as it's known, is a work in progress. Anyone can visit now and even buy items, but the land is mostly bare. Basically, we will be able to do things in this new world which we only dreamed of, okay? And it will open up opportunities which we don't even know yet. Unlike in more mainstream virtual worlds like Roblox and Fortnite, which are fully controlled by big gaming companies, Platforms like Decentraland are built on cryptocurrency-style technology. In these crypto metaverses, everything is open and everything is for sale. You can buy land as non-fungible tokens or NFTs, in the same way you own land in the real world. And there's been an explosion in land buying. According to analysts at DAP Radar, nearly $2 billion has been spent in the past year on metaverse land. But it's not just big corporations. I bought my first Metaverse parcel in July 2020. It was about 1,500 that I paid. I bought it really for exhibiting my own work, but also for running events, um, Metaverse events that would promote my art, but also other people's art. Angie Taylor is an artist who's been creating, selling and buying digital art for years. She owns plots in a platform called Voxels. This is my gallery, it's called the London Gallery, and I built, built it myself. I started um, chatting to other female artists on the kind of crypto art scene who were saying that they just felt underrepresented and needed somewhere to kind of promote their work. So I said, well, why not? Why don't we do an exhibition in crypto voxels? So, I put together this exhibition called the She Art Exhibition, and it was the first um, exhibition of crypto art by anyone I IDing as she. Angie also makes clothing for avatars. When I first entered Crypto Voxels, I thought I need an outfit. 
So um, I started making my own outfit and I decided to base it on myself at the age of about 18. At the time I had a huge red Mohican and um, I used to wear sedition made t-shirts. You'll find little places like this, like this gallery here where, so you could come in here and buy a hat for your avatar. You may be noticing a pattern here. Fashion is a growing part of the early metaverse economy. While some fashion houses are dipping their toes into this world, with one-off NFT clothing collections, for example, the fabricant in Amsterdam is going all in. They only make digital clothes here. Sure. What's your favourite? This, I think, the one I'm wearing is my mm. favourite. That sort of feels to me like it's Elizabethan, maybe. Yeah, yeah, Elizabethan. Mm. Amber J. Slouten is the co-founder and lead designer for the fabricant. When we started, Everybody called us crazy because they were like, why would you need this? But we very strongly believed in the idea that in the future people would wear the digital items. What we wanted to do is take the two things that clothing is apart. So on the one hand, you have clothing that is functional, which keeps you warm and um, you know, it protects you. And on the other hand, clothing is a form of self-expression that basically lets you share the message of who you are and with everybody around you, let's say. so. Um, to take those two apart is basically what we did and uh, that we can do with technology only. We don't need anything else. The company is selling digital garments to customers, costing anything between $100 to thousands. Their record was for a digital dress which fetched 19000 The company has just raised $14 million in funding and is hoping to grow and become profitable as the metaverse materialises. Like a lot of the people and companies we're talking to, you're, you're investing in the metaverse. Are you um, hopeful that you're early and the masses will come? Yeah, I think there will be for sure um, like a mass market in this because if you think about a younger generation already, they already play games. Like for them, there's no distinction between virtual and real. It's natural evolution that we will be able to communicate from anywhere in the world, anytime with each other, but it still needs to be built. The metaverse land grab is of course a bit like history repeating itself. Remember Second Life? Some firms like IBM poured money into building conference centers here when this virtual world took off in the early 2000s. But within a couple of years, the facilities were abandoned and discussions of the metaverse were forgotten. Mateen Sudagar is a successful metaverse landowner and NFT collector. I don't think people truly realize or companies truly realize how much money, capital resources, um, passion it takes to build out these, this metaverse or parts of the metaverse. Um, there, there's just so much momentum you need to be something that can, and can, that can stand the test of the next five years. Whether this thing comes to fruition or not, you got to keep building and keep existing. If anything we've learned from 2017, 2020, 2021 is that 98% of the fluff that comes up here promising big things disappear into nothingness. So that it's very easy to make a landing page that looks pretty and promises the world. There's a lot you have to think about before uh, parting with your money in this space. For Philip Pline, though, the answer is quite simple. At the moment, the wrong people are shaping these metaverse platforms. The best way to convince people is to make user-friendly, user-friendly um, experiences. At the moment, I have to commit, it's not user-friendly yet, because it's for a bunch of tech guys, you know, a bunch of like freaks, you know, who are excited about uh, uh, technology, you know. But once we start to make it easy to access, Everybody will follow because the experience will be so much better. A lack of people power is also a problem in other metaverses too. In Horizon Worlds, Meta's flagship virtual world, leaked internal reports also suggest that people are not being engaged for very long. And Angie is finding the same problem where she's bought land. Where is everybody? As you're moving through, you'll notice there's a lot of big white boxes. So these are the spaces that people buy up and then don't do anything with. It makes the area feel dead. The big tech vision of the metaverse is well on its way to achieving mainstream adoption. Roblox, Fortnite and Minecraft have hundreds of millions of users and are developing more metaverse style utility all the time. The crypto metaverses, despite being more true to the fully open vision of the metaverse, are clearly not drawing in the crowds yet. 
Some analysts predict that these worlds will explode in the next 10 years, with people spending six hours a day plugged in. But which version and which land these people will choose to populate is very much unknown.